All right, let's move on to chapter 14. Make sure this clock is ticking on this thing here. And it is, so we're good to go. So let's move on to chapter 14, which is about, covers technical analysis. And this is a very different approach to uh, picking stocks and picking uh, securities, picking indexes uh, than fundamental analysis. And I found this quote, and I, um, obviously uh, this is a quote that was uh, made by a fundamental an analyst. Te uh, technical analysts know the prices of everything but the value of nothing. So that um, indicates or illustrates to you the um, disdain that fundamental analysts have for technicians. And in fact, uh, that disdain is shared on the other side uh, by technical analysts it's like the Republicans and the Democrats. They just don't tend to give each other much uh, credit. Okay? All right, but it also shows what technical analysis is focused on, which is prices. Prices. All right, so let's get into details. Technical analysis involves the examination of past market data, such as prices and trading volume, and we call that sharding. Okay, we, we um, post or paste or put uh, pricing information and volume information on charts, so we call it charting. Some, sometimes people refer to technical analysis as uh, charting or as uh, people who, who um, follow or pursue technical uh, analysis as chartists, okay? Or uh, we look at recent trading activity by targeted groups of investors, certain investors, like insiders or individual traders, and that is sentiment, psychology, the feeling that people have. What does the trading activity show us about what individual traders or insiders or other targeted groups, what are they feeling, what are they doing, okay? As a basis, why do we do these things? To estimate future market prices or future market moves or security moves for indexes and for individual securities. In other words, where do we think prices, asset prices are going in the future based on where, how they have behaved in the past and how certain groups, what certain groups are up to, what they're doing. All right. Technicians develop trading rules based on observations of historic market trading and or sentiment data. Individual investors and large investment firms employ technical analysis. So there are lots of different uh, people who follow technical analysis. Most people who trade frequently use technical analysis, and this is very, very true. The people who use technical analysis the most are the people who are making shorter term decisions and taking shorter term actions. Very true. Okay, what are the assumptions of technical analysis? Market value or price is solely a function of supply of an investment which is how many shares, bonds or units that are available, that's supply, and demand for the investment. Supply of the investment and demand for the investment. The supply-demand relationship is governed by rational, reasonable factors such as fundamentals and by irrational factors such as emotions. Company fundamentals mean nothing to a technical investor. If you're following technical analysis, this first part, the fundamentals, they pay very little attention to it, okay? They pay a lot more attention to this part of it. They pay no attention, technical analysts pay no attention, or, or technicians pay no attention to what a company does. They don't care what a company does. They don't care who manages the company. Is it Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, they don't care, okay? Or how the company has performed financially. They don't care. They don't want to see it. It doesn't matter to them. They don't look at the financials. They don't look at the products and services. They don't look at the management, okay? Disregarding minor fluctuations, the prices for investments, such as individual securities and market indexes, move in trends that persist for appreciable length of, lengths of time. 
So technicians ignore the fundamentals, but they do look at price action and they believe that trends continue or persist. Okay? Trading volume is important. Volume, how many shares, how many units traded, because it measures investor interest or enthusiasm. How strongly do people feel about the securities they're buying and selling? Therefore, if a stock declines on light volume, that is much better than if it declines on heavy volume. People don't really believe that decline if it's on light volume. So you must consider price changes and related trading volume to assess the significance of trading events. How significant is the trend? It depends on the change, which direction, the magnitude of the change, and the volume associated with the change. All right, continuing on with assumptions of technical analysis. Technicians see no need to study fundamentals such as economic data or company variables to estimate future values. They don't do it. They believe the market is its own best predictor. Okay? In fact, changes in price trends may predict forthcoming changes in fundamental variables rather than the other way around. Fundamental analysts believe that changes in fundamentals lead to changes in prices, stock prices or security prices, whereas technicians believe change in prices predict changes in fundamentals. They say the change in the price will happen before the change in the fundamental. Technical and fundamental analysts disagree on the extent of the influence of irrational factors. Technicians believe that emotional responses can drive a securities price for an extended period of time. More importantly, they disagree on the speed of the adjustment of stock prices to changes in supply and demand. So the persistence and the speed of adjustment are areas of disagreement. Fundamental analysts believe that stock prices adjust very quickly to new information. We went over this in great detail in the chapter about the efficient market hypothesis. The range of beliefs are the efficient market hypothesis on one end of the spectrum and technical analysis on the opposite end of the spectrum. Okay? Technicians believe that new information is slowly disseminated through a network of declining investor sophistication. Here's what they believe, that uh, the, the route that the dissemination of information takes. First, insiders get to see this information, and so they respond by buying or selling. Then specialists and other market makers, then they see the information, and they buy and sell based on it. Then analysts see the information, and they buy and sell. Then brokers and big customers <coughs> see the information, and they buy and sell. And lastly, the small investors, the individual investors, lastly, they see that information, and they buy and sell. Because the process takes time, the trend will persist. Okay. This slow process keeps prices moving in a general direction for long periods of time, according to technicians. All right. Critics charge that studies do not support technical analysis. In fact, most studies have not validated technical trading rules. Technical analysts do not believe that anyone can consistently get new fundamental information and process it quickly and correctly. So listen, folks. Technicians believe that the fundamentalists have it wrong, and the fundamentalists believe the technicians have it wrong. Okay? A major advantage of technical analysis is that it does not rely on historic financial statements. Financial statements can be misleading. They do not capture non-quantitative factors such as uh, customer goodwill, consumer goodwill, and general investor attitudes. Okay? So once again, both sides have some positives and some negatives. So that's our beginning clip. We're going to take a break and we'll come back and move on with technical analysis. Shalom.